Hi friends, good morning all. Welcome back to CAP Classes. In continuation of the previous video, today we are going to discuss in financial management. What are the key decisions the finance manager or the CEO of the company has to take? There are three major decisions in financial management. They are one, financing decisions, two, investing decisions, three, dividend decisions. Financing decisions deal with financing activities. That is how money is to be mobilized, how the required capital is to be mobilized. Investment decisions deal with investing activity, that means in which project or in which asset the money can be invested. For example, if there are various projects or if there are various assets which we can purchase, each and every investment is a separate investment proposal. So out of various available alternative proposals, which alternative proposal is to be chosen in the best interest of the company and its shareholders, is decided in investing decisions and dividend decisions deal with out of earnings of the company when we calculate EPS, EPS is calculated as earnings available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. Once EPS is calculated, say for example EPS is 10 rupees, out of 10 rupees how much should be declared as cash dividend which is to be paid to shareholders and how much of the money is to be retained. So out of EPS, out of earnings, whatever the money that is declared as dividend is called dividend payout ratio. Whatever the money which is retained for the future growth of the company, which is popularly known as retained earnings and reserves, is called retention ratio. So these are three important decisions in financial management. And in this video, we are going to discuss in detail what are these financing decisions. So, financing decisions deal with financing activities. Financing decisions deal with financing activities. So, this is how the required money, how the required capital can be mobilized. Here, we need to discuss about two things. One is sources of funds. Another one is capital structure rate. So, in financial decisions, in making financial decisions, two major important factors are one, sources of funds, two is capital structure. And you know there are so many sources of funds, and in your plus one plus two also, or in your CPT also, you might have read, various sources of funds can be broadly classified into long term, medium term, and short term. More than five years of life, if the instrument has, it is called long term. Three to five years of time, we call it medium term, and less than three years of time, we call it short term sources of funds. And also, you know, from the ownership point of view, sources of funds are broadly categorized into owner's funds, that means shareholders' funds and borrowed funds or external borrowings. External borrowings in financial management, we call it debt. Owner's funds, we call it equity. So, equity plus debt is total capital of the company. In other words, total capital of the company can broadly be categorized into debt and equity based on whether it belongs to shareholder fund, whether it belongs to owners or whether it is given by the outsider like the venture holder or any financial banker, etc. So, from which source I should mobilize money is one question to be addressed by finance manager and the other one is capital structure. Now, let us see sources first after that we will come to capital structure. Now, by choosing a source, should I go with equity, should I go with debt, etc, etc, etc. To address this, to answer this question, you need to understand three things. Each and every source of fund has its own advantages, its own limitations. That means, it has its own characteristics. So, first we need to understand characteristics of various sources. Characteristics of various sources. We need to understand three things in this. One is cost. Second one is control. Third one is a risk. These three are the parameters we need to consider. Now let us see what is meant by cost, control and risk in detail now. Cost here refers to the cost of capital. Cost of capital is the cost to be incurred by the company when they are utilizing the capital contributed by the investor in their business. 
simple example of cost of capital is interest, dividends, etc. This is a simple example. In cost of capital chapter, we discuss this in detail, but in simple terms, what is cost of capital? If you borrow money, you need to pay interest. If you take shares, that means if you issue shares and take proceeds from shareholders, you need to pay dividend, etc. These are cost of capital. Now, cost of debt is represented by KB. Similarly, cost of equity fund is represented by KE. And there is one basic fundamental thing in financial management that KD is always less than KE. KD is always less than KE. That means if an investor is purchasing the pension of a company, if he expects 9% or 10% interest, same investor, if he is investing money in equity shares of the company, he might expect 24% or 30% return on his investment. Now you may ask why, sir, same investor, same company, when he is investing in debentures, why he is happy with 9% and when he is investing in equity, why he wants 24%. This is because of the risk associated with that capital. For example, your dad has 1 lakh rupees of money in his hand and he wants to deposit that in some statement of India fixed deposit. So when your dad is going to invest that money in statement of India fixed deposit, you read some news in money control app or you know in some business standard newspaper and you suggested your dad that dad why don't you invest this money in DCS or Infosys shares wherein you know the return on investment is very high. Say for example return on investment is 30%. So you told your dad that that SBA gives you 7% interest per annum wherein DCS or any other company equity is you know giving 25% 30% higher return. Why can't you invest money in equity shares? Then your dad will tell you one beautiful logic. He says, beta listen. If I invest money in State Bank of India FD, how much of the return I get, whether it is 7%, 6%, 6.5%, whatever it is, that 6,500 rupees is certain amount, 100% I have assurance and guarantee that at the end of one year, I am receiving that money. But when you invest money in equity shares of a company, there is no guarantee that after one year, that company will give you so and so dividend or capital appreciation. There is no guarantee. So the variability or you know the probability that it might change, it might not happen, it may happen adverse also. That is what we call risk. That means if you are investing money in a debt instrument, you are more, far more safer than when you are investing money in an equity instrument. This is the first logic your dad gives you. And the second logic is, your dad will tell you also that better reason, if I invest 1 lakh rupees of money in State Bank of India, my, my amount, principal amount, which is 1 lakh rupees, is always a sure bank. So it will not become 99,000 and that is guaranteed. But when I invest 1 lakh rupees in the equity shares of a company, based on the market prices of the shares, it might come down also. In the worst case scenario, it could be zero also. This is another type of risk equity shareholder is exposed to. So, if you understand these two points that return on investment is fixed in debt instrument, principal amount repayment is also fixed in debt, debt instrument, makes debt less riskier and dividends are not predetermined, you cannot get, you know, a fixed dividend at the end of uh, the year or there is no written agreement between the company and the equity shareholder that this will be the money paid after so and so point of time. Because of these two reasons, Cost of equity, which means the expectation of the equity shareholder of the company, is always higher than cost of debt. That means the expectation of debenture holder from the company. So here, if you observe, along with cost, we discussed with the risk associated with equity and debt instruments also. So cost is over, risk is over. Now let us come to the point control. Let us see what is this control now. Each and every source of finance has its own characteristic of control also. That means, consider a company X Limited. X Limited has 100 crore rupees of equity share capital. They need another 50 crores now for its expansion program. That means, the additional funds required is 50 crores. Now, this 50 crores can be mobilized both in terms of equity or by taking some loan or issuing debentures, which is debt. Now, if you observe, if they are going for equity, the equity may come from the existing shareholders of this 100 crore or it may come from the new equity shareholders also. Usually, if the company goes for rights to shares and if all the rights are subscribed, available by all the existing shareholders, 
then there will be no digestion of control. But when this equity is issued to outsiders, then definitely this creates dilution in the control of the existing shareholders. That means if one Mr. A is having 10% of company before the issue of this additional shares, he will have less than 10% once this new shares also comes. That is the reason in accounts also, when these new shares are coming, EPS comes down will be the basic logic. So what we need to understand, if a company is going for equity instruments, that means they are mobilizing their money to equity shares, then there is a possibility that the control will be diluted. But if debt instruments are issued, that means bonds are, you know, some kind of debentures are issued or if you have borrowed money from banks or public financial institutions, the percentage state of equity shareholders or the control of the company will not be diluted. This is the advantage of debt. But you need to understand one more thing also. When you issue debt, control is not diluted, but there is another risk called finance risk to equity shareholders. Now, we study financial leverage and leverage analysis concept. If you remember the concept, more debt will lead to, will lead to more interest payment. Because interest is a fixed burden, fixed finance cost, it creates financial risk. So, to some extent, the debt works positively. Beyond that, debt works negatively. So, it is something like I can say in my own style, debt is something like salt in case of one food. When you prepare some dish, salt is an essential ingredient. So, if you put sufficient salt, it will be so tasty, but more salt will spoil the taste of the dish. So, dementures also, to some extent, it increases the EPS of the company. Beyond the point, it might create financial risk and stress on the company also. So, you need to understand that before finalizing on the source, three characteristics, cost, control, and risk. After that only, you have to choose and you have to make a decision as to the source of fund. So, in this video, in a nutshell, we discussed that there are three decisions in finance, financial management, which are financing decisions, investing decisions, and dividend decisions. And also, we discussed more about financing decisions. Financing decisions deal with financing activities. That means how the required capital can be pulled into the business. And two things are to be discussed. One is source of funds. In source of funds, you need to understand three characteristics, cost, control, and risk. And the second important point is capital structure. Now, what is capital structure? Capital structure refers to the proportion of various sources. Say, for example, you have equity share capital, you have preferential share capital, you have debentures, and you have term loans. So, total 50 crore rupees of money required is pulled 20 crores by way of equity, 5 crores by way of preference shares, 10 crores by way of debentures, 25 and remaining balance 15 by way of term loans. The proportion of each and every source in total capital employed is called capital structure. So, in this situation, I can say equity constitutes 40% of capital, preference constitutes 10% of capital, debt constitutes 20% of capital, and term loans, this is debentures, and term loans constitute 30% of capital. If you observe, this is equity 50%, this is debt 50%. If you observe, this is equity 50%, this is debt 50%. So, this ratio is known as capital structure. So, capital structure refers to the ratios or the proportions in which the total capital employed of the company is formed. In another word, what is the percentage of equity in total capital? What is the proportion of debt in total capital? Is also known as capital structure. Now, you may ask, sir, is this something like debt equity ratio? Yes, it is something like debt equity ratio. Now, the finance manager has to consider capital structure also because there is something called optimum capital structure. Optimum capital structure is the capital structure where the cost of capital of the company is the lowest and the value of the company is the highest. So, in leverage concept and while studying the capital structure theories, we learn about levered firm, unlevered firm, highly levered firm, what is the impact of using debt on the EPS of the company, what is the impact of using debt on market price of the share, what is the impact of debt on the financial risk of the company, all of these things we study in detail in capital structure theories. So, in a nutshell, capital structure refers to the proportions of every single source of capital in the total capital employed of the company. Thank you.